Congo, Real Talk with Real Women About Marriage. Every month we interview a different married woman and we talk about subjects ranging from kids and religion to sex and communication. This month we are interviewing Nicole Cartmill. Um, I have known Nicole just about as long as I've lived in Atlanta. She's my hairstylist. She's the owner of Stonework Salon. And she's been married to her husband Terrell for just about 15 years this summer and they have four kids together. So Nicole, thank you so much for joining me on the couch today. You're I appreciate welcome. it. You and I have had many a conversation related to kids and marriage, and so I'm, I'm very thankful that you are willing to sit here and have this conversation with me. We have. Yes, we <laughs> have. And I, I'll tell everybody, she is a great ear um, and a voice of reason <laughs> and has a very interesting perspective on um, a lot of different topics, so I really enjoy our conversations when I come in to get my my hair done. So, how did you and Terrell meet? So, I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and um, Terrell took a job out there with the dot-com company, and we met on a networking cruise boat. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, we were out in the Puget Sound um, for an evening of networking and food and dancing, drinks. Cool. Yeah. So, after you guys met, how long before you got married? Let's see, we lived in Seattle um, two years, so probably almost three years in Seattle and then another year here before I got married. So it was closer to four, maybe four and a half. So you guys took the family, your first two boys, Dion and, and God, I'm blanking on his name. Rashad. Right? Rashad. You guys moved them down here. Yes. And then got married. Yep. Was that hard, moving from Seattle to Georgia? Like, was it a big difference for you guys, hard to adjust? Um, I had lived in Atlanta before, so I adjusted really okay. quickly. And I would say that Terrell did too. I mean, he kind of instantly liked it here, and it was, um, the work was good, the environment was good. The kids had lived down here before when they were little, so they were used to being down here. Now, I know Terrell likes to turn the grill on and cook up a little bit. Does he... How did you guys, has he always been that way? How did, how did you guys develop the, the roles in the household? Um, did, does he cook more than you do? Do you take on like the traditional wifely duties in the house? Or how did things work for you guys and how did you end up there? So Terrell, um, Terrell's the oldest and his next sibling is about five years younger than him. So I think that played a big part in like who he was and um, and what he was capable of doing, what he was his willingness, mm -hmm. because he was used to um, having make meals for them and things like that. So he's always enjoyed cooking, although his cooking has gone to a whole other level. Yeah. Um, but we still, you know, he cooks probably more on the weekends, and I cook through the week. Um, sometimes, you know, he'll cook through the week. It just depends. We definitely share the duties. He doesn't expect me to, you know, completely do all the cooking because I work also. So, and you're at the salon a lot, a good bit. I am, yeah. So that takes a toll on yeah. you at home for sure. So I mean, sometimes I'll prep stuff in the morning. Um, we love our crock pot. I know. We eat lots of salads. You know, we're pretty simple. Um, he likes more elaborate food than I do. He always has. So. Yeah, I find that with Ray too. He likes to throw out these gourmet meals where he'll cook multi, uh, multiple items, and I'm just like, I'm not gonna eat all of that. But it's nice, I guess, to have all the variety. But I yeah. guess that's, maybe it's a man thing. I yeah, and we grew up eating um, very differently, also. Yeah. So Terrell grew up in the Midwest. He's from Illinois, um, Champagne. So he he grew up eating heavier meals, fried foods, and mm -hmm. you know lots of potatoes and meat and I grew up in the Pacific Northwest so we ate more seafood, mm. more vegetables, you know. So how did that play out with the kids, like getting them adjusted to your two different eating styles? Was it easy? Did they tend to lean towards more of what he wanted to eat or? Um, they, I mean the kids weren't, you know, picky eaters, they ate kid mm -hmm. food. So, and I would say that when we first got together, he kind of allowed me to kind of do what I had been doing with them. And so, um, you know, they wanted to eat something new. I mean, they always enjoyed eating with them, so. Um, they're boys, so they'll kind of, you know, they like to eat 
They like to eat. Yeah, they like to eat. So, yeah. So, when we talk about you guys' relationship and, and how it grew over the years to deciding to get married, did religion play a part in your relationship at all? Does it play one now? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's the biggest part. It's the biggest part. Yeah, it's the biggest part because you have to build your relationship on the foundation. And if you don't have a foundation, it's not going to last. You know, and everybody's, um, you know, idea on religion um, or foundations can be a bit different. Mm -hmm. But it's important to be able to go, for us, it's important to be able to go back to, you know, scripture um, when things are not looking the way that we want them to look and not feeling the way that we want them to feel. So it's good to have something to go back to and kind of, you know, have a base. Now, did you guys, as single people, did you guys practice the same religions? Um, we, yes. Uh, yes and no. So both both of us are Christians. We both grew up in you know Christian backgrounds. Terrell's mom is a Jehovah's Witness, and I think he was about twelve when she started um, when she became a Jehovah's Witness. So he's had you know that perspective, mm -hmm. um, the perspective of the Kingdom Hall and the Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, his grandfather is a he's Baptist pastor so you know he had a really good you know foundation I also was aware of Jehovah's Witnesses because um, Rashad and Dion's grandparents um, on their dad on their dad's side of the family is also Jehovah's Witnesses okay so I kind of already it was easy to kind of understand the perspective and where his mom was coming from and um, you know her views and her thoughts now, when, when we talk about religion and the impact on your relationships, how did that play out in the, the husband and wife dynamic when we talk about being a submissive wife? Um, do you subscribe to that methodology or that thinking? What are your thoughts on it? I mean, I think that being submissive is an interpretation. So. You know, some people will go overboard with it, and some people, you know, will, um, you know, it's loosely based. So it's more your interpretation of what that looks like. So I definitely, you know, Terrell is definitely the head of the household, um, but I'm his helpmate. Yes. And that's important. It's important for him to understand that. I think women uh, tend to, most of us tend to, kind of be a little bit more nurturing. Um, so we, we do okay with submission if we have some strength in the house. But I don't know that men always um, understand the concept of their helpmate and what that is. So they kind of, sometimes they'll take, uh, um, uh, they'll, they'll think our, they will mistake our nagging or what they think is nagging as really their you know, us being a helpmate. We're kind of like their conscience, a part of their conscience. So sometimes we will we'll recognize things and we will say things and um, they take it, it depends on how they take it. Mm -hmm. You know, if they take it well and they listen to it, then they understand what a helpmate is. Yeah, yeah. If they don't, then it can become a problem for them because, you know, that's, that's part of our job. You know, is to be their conscience. If they don't, if they don't receive it well, if they, you know, if they think that we're trying to overpower them or overthink them or be smarter than them, um, it, you know, it can become a problem. And and I would say on the other hand, you know, a lot of women perceive the concept of being a submissive wife as one where um, the woman is told what to do. Um, she doesn't have a say in the home, and, and, and just like you said, it's, it's, it's really meant to be the, the helpmate of the, the head of the, the home. You're meant to counsel and guide and, and provide insight and assist where needed, um, and, and then lead, lead in other areas as well. And I think if you don't have a good sense of yourself or um, faith in your spouse, then that's where your 
uh, misconception about that concept can, can cause problems. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so definitely that's, you know, at times that's been an issue that we've had to touch on. Um, when either he didn't have a good understanding of what I was trying to do or vice versa, so yeah. 